Hello and welcome to the Tuesday, June 18th, 2024 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Xavier today wrote up an interesting piece of malware. Well, that isn't actually malware. Often when we talk about remote access tools or RADs, we use that term to refer to malicious software being installed that allows clandestine remote access to a victim's system. But why use a malicious remote access tool if there are plenty of good ones out there? Now, we have often seen this, of course, with, for example, tech support scammers, where they ask victims to install a remote admin tool in order to do screen sharing sessions. What Xavier found was, however, a wrapped version of a tool called Net Support. Again, this is a legitimate tool, nothing really evil about it, but in this case, it comes with a malicious configuration file to make it connect to a specific server. All of this is delivered as a standard install packet, so an MSIX package that the victim can easily install on their system or that may be installed via some other downloader or similar malware. Remote access tools and TeamViewer, for example, comes to mind here is certainly something that you need to uh, keep an eye on. Whether or not they're malicious or non-malicious, well, it all depends on how they're being used. So you definitely should prevent users from installing any tools like that unless you specifically need them for a specific support reason. And the Taiwanese cert did publish an advisory regarding a number of different D-Link routers. Apparently, these D-Link routers are suffering from a backdoor in certain firmware versions. The way the backdoor is activated is that an attacker would first access a hidden URL. That URL does not require any authentication. This will enable the Telnet service and then they can actually log in via Telnet using specific administrator credentials. Haven't seen any details posted yet as to what the exact URL and uh, if there is a specific uh, unchangeable password here, but I doubt we'll have to wait long for this to be made public somehow. And if you're using the popular Mac terminal iTerm2, there is a critical update for you. It's always interesting to see remote code execution vulnerabilities in tools like a simple terminal emulator. Of course, iTerm2 is far from simple. And that's a little bit the problem here where it's a Tmux integration together with the ability to set titles of windows from the command line do allow for the remote code execution by essentially being able to inject appropriate escape characters. I've seen similar vulnerabilities in the past, like with Xterm and uh, other uh, terminals. So this is nothing fundamentally new, but uh, definitely something that you do need to patch and a patch has been made available if I remember correctly, iTerm2 will also alert you of any new versions that may have been published. And for those running Nextcloud, there is an update. It fixes uh, two vulnerabilities with a rating of high. One does allow the expanding of existing sharing permissions. The second one does allow the login without using multi-factor authentication. So even though a user has multi-factor authentication configured, an attacker could uh, bypass uh, this requirement. Given all the credential stuffing that we have seen sort of in recent months or last couple of years, I figured it's worthwhile mentioning this vulnerability and definitely you do want to apply the patch. Well, and this is it for today. Thanks for liking this podcast. Thanks for subscribing. And also thanks for listening to the end, uh, because that apparently is something that uh, the Apple podcast algorithm is looking for. And talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.